When you're having a chronic disease, life doesn't get any easier. And on top of that, you have to deal with your colleagues, your partner, your children, your family, your friends, the environment, the neighbors. And you have a lack of energy, a lack of health, and you can't keep up with that, what you would actually want to do and to be. And therefore, in this podcast, I would like to talk about this, like how to deal with your environment when you're having a chronic disease. And the goal is to prevent you from making the same mistakes that I made. I have made a lot of content based on dealing with yourself, dealing with your symptoms, dealing with your emotions. But there are, of course, other people that rely on you. Maybe, let's say, a husband or children. What would you do with them? Um, I think it is important to tell them the truth. Even the children. And you don't have to find any kinds of labels or, or stories or scientific researches to, to justify what is going on with you. But you just tell them that something happened and right now you're dealing with extreme symptoms like extreme fatigue, extreme anxiety or elevated stress levels. And that because of that, you have a lower capacity. So you can't keep up anymore with what you usually did. And you have to mourn that. You, you're just not anymore the same person. And it is impossible to push yourself into being that old person because there is a reason why you're in this place and you have to go through it there is no there's no other way out and therefore you have to be very honest so don't promise things that you can do that you obviously can't do but there are there are of course a few traps that you don't want to to make, like uh, falling into a pit or laying inside of your bed all day, every day, waiting for the symptoms to wind down and focus on the symptoms. So we don't want that, but you can tell to your partner and your children that you have limited capacity and you can still want to continue being a good mother or father or partner, but maybe you can use a safe word. Maybe. Uh, crazy word like a like a fruit or a plant and that means that you're getting very stressed or that your symptoms are increasing that at that moment you need some more rest so that everyone accepts that when you say that word your capacity has been reached and you need to go and lie down for a while and that's all good it's all good be very careful with what you're talking about, not only to your family, but also to your friends and colleagues. Because you don't want everyone to focus on your symptoms. You don't want everybody to ask, how are you doing today? Because that will confront you with the lack of how good you're doing. And that can make things very negative. So you start focusing all the time on the symptoms and that's not really helpful anyway. Many people mention that it's time to listen to their body. But if you understand the mind-body connection, then listening to the symptoms is not the same as listening to the body. And many people had the tendency to push, push, push and to be too stressed in their previous life and then they think maybe it's time to, to listen to this. But that's not a good plan. I think you need to listen to your body, but not to the symptoms. So what do you want to talk about? Does every conversation need to be about your, your current situation? Probably not, right? But you would, you would like some understanding and acceptance, of course. Because many people are not going to accept you. Many people are not going to understand you. Now with, uh, with long COVID after the Corona crisis, there is some more acceptance to these kinds of uh, phenomenon. But still, 
I mean, you could use it's like you could say something like it's it's long COVID and and just be done with it. Because explaining to people that what you don't really understand yourself is doomed to fail. So what's going to happen then is that you start explaining long COVID or you start to explain chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalitis, fibromyalgia. But these labels are all so fake and not really helping you anyway. Especially the, the label of myalgic encephalitis, ME, makes you some sort of a, a victim. I remember that I used to identify with that label. It also gave me a good feeling that there is a reason why I can't keep up with society. There is a reason why I'm a bad member of society. Why I'm taking advantage of the system. I mean, that's what people were telling me. It's myalgic encephalitis. And if you look this diagnosis up, then it's, it's a horror diagnosis. And you can't ever recover. Because if you would recover from this, then people will attack you like they did me. They did with me. Telling you that you didn't have this in the first place. So the, this, the whole community behind those labels are self-fulfilling negative prophecies. Therefore, keep away from labels. You can say long COVID if someone really wants to understand. And other than that, you can just tell them how you're actually feeling. Extremely fatigued. Or I don't want to talk about this. But the first step is that you start to accept this transformation yourself. If you feel guilty for not keeping up with your to-do list and society and your colleagues, then trying to get acceptance outside of yourself from other people by throwing in labels or other stories is merely a coping mechanism. A coping mechanism never gives you what you want, but it, also, it always sort of it fights the feeling of guilt. So if there is guilt for not keeping up, then, you know, feel the guilt first. Because trying to convince other people that your suffering is real is doomed to fail. Because, first of all, other people have their own stories. They have their own projections. And most of all, just don't give a shit about you or what is going on. And the things that they project on you, for example, being a lazy member of society or being taking advantage of your husband or all these types of things it merely says something about them they are probably as well very hard on themselves and 10 years ago when i developed a chronic disease there was no understanding whatsoever a lot of people judged me and some of these people were very hard on themselves and have a chronic disease now as well so it was not their time yet to understand what I was going through. But now that I have gone through, they can finally figure it out themselves how it is. Especially now with the long COVID condition, it becomes more well known. And maybe everyone start of, starts to know someone in their environment with this condition. So why do you need acceptance? Maybe it's time to give yourself acceptance first of how to deal with this or not to be the one that you want to be. And why did you want to be something else in the first place? How was that previous life where you pushed yourself into complying with maybe your mind tactics or society's standards? How did that feel in the first place? And do you think that Maybe that has something to do with this. And then your job, how to deal with your boss and your colleagues. I think the same principle applies. Honesty. Just tell them what you're going through. Either they accept you or they don't. Maybe you lose your job because of this. But losing your job for being authentic and being you is better than keeping your job and pushing yourself to be someone that you are not. And for the most, uh, for most people, 
this is a healing journey. It's a transformation journey. You're sort of um, were a, a caterpillar and now you're in a cocoon. And eventually you will become a butterfly. On the other side of recovery, your life is going to be completely different. And that's going to be an amazing thing. Because if you would be honest, you'd say that the life that you used to have wasn't that great because you felt a lot of pressure, a lot of stress hormones. Maybe you didn't have any time for yourself. Maybe you slowly forgot what it was to have joy. So you're in a transformation journey. And especially when you have children and a, and a partner, it's good to make them a part of this, to tell them how you're feeling, to tell them how you're struggling. Not that you want their advice or that you want them to soothe you, but just be honest. And it's going to be very emotional. So you're going to have lots of emotions and you're going to probably uh, experience a lot of old emotions from the past, emotions that you have stored in the body. So you had um, a way of dealing with yourself to, 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 to squeeze a lot of stress back into your body. But now is the time to, to get it out, to release it. And children pick up on these tendencies because what you uh, consider normal will also become normal for your children. But a lot of the things that we've been doing in our society were not normal or not natural, not healthy. So if you start learning more about your emotions, your boundaries, then you can share that information with your children so they can learn from this. Sometimes I feel that we're sort of the next evolution. If you look back to, to history, at least the history that, that they've taught us, there was the Middle Ages, there was war, and then the 20th century with two world wars. And a lot of trauma is stored into humanity. And we pass that trauma and pressure to our children. And generational trauma usually lasts around seven generations. But I feel like this group right now that is experiencing a chronic disease is sort of um, dissolving a lot of old stress from generations. And that the new generation will be a better generation because of this. And children can learn really fast because when you start learning how to deal with your own trauma or your family's trauma and your own boundaries, you can also learn to co-regulate your children better or to understand the, the troubles of your children and the boundaries of your children better. And that means that they can grow up in a much healthier way. Children have only a few basic needs safety, competence, autonomy, and equal relationships. So a lot of the stuff that we want for our children are not really needed. Yet a lot of the pressure that we put on ourselves to perform, to be well, we pass along to our children. I put a blog on the website called Parenting with CFS. It's about how to parent when you're having a chronic disease. And this blog is there to completely shift your perspective. Because a lot of the things that we do for our children are not necessary and maybe even harmful. So many people put pressures on their children because they experience the pressures in themselves. Or their parents were pressuring them. But a chronic disease is the, is, is the best moment to, to stop this generational trauma and to stop this pressure. And you can be afraid that your children get bad results. But is this really the fear of your children or are you putting fear on your children? And I think, especially when you're having a chronic disease, it's better to just be there for them. It's sort of the theory, like uh, like, uh, like, like like children are like little plants and seeds. So you put a seed in the, in, in, in the, in the soil, you make sure it's good soil, you water the seed. You water the plant and the plant will evolve itself. But if you start interfering all the time, then the plant can't really grow properly. Or if the soil is very bad, like no safety, no autonomy, no equal relationships, etc. 
then you're sort of destroying the plant before it has a good chance. And that's when trauma usually starts, when the foundations were not right. So it's good to, to involve your children and your partner and maybe your parents and direct family. And to your coworkers, you can just be honest. To your boss, you can just be honest. And then your friends, they're also going to be disappointed. Maybe you used to be very fun or maybe with you, you could always do sports together and this won't be possible anymore. From all the friends that I had 10 years ago, I have none left. So eight years or seven years, I don't know, like six, seven, eight years of a chronic disease was too much for any friendship to survive. And a lot of the, a lot of my friends judged me and they made me feel very bad and unaccepted. So I told them all kinds of labels, like first myalgic encephalitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, or some other things. And then because I desperately wanted to go back, I told them about possible treatments, maybe brain training. Maybe I go to the, to, 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 to a psychologist. But every time, these people, they were not really interested. Plus, I was not saying them the right things. I wasn't really honest about how I'm actually feeling. I was trying to fight myself with these labels, with these treatments. So none of it helped. And the interest of even the closest friends slowly fade away. Because I was no longer who they wanted me to be. I was no longer their sports buddy or the, the one where they could laugh with. Suddenly things became serious. And then, you know, like um, I also had um, a neighbor. He was like, um, and in the end of his 40s, beginning of his 50s. And I saw that man almost every day because I was hanging out in the garden a lot. This man really gave me a hard time. So he wanted to be um, telling me that I was um, a lazy, that I was taking advantage, that I was not as productive member of society, you name it. And whatever I did to convince this man, everything became worse. He started judging me more, but he always started new conversations somehow. And I... Sooner or later, I noticed that this man was very hard on himself, very hard. And he was also very hard on me, of course, because he didn't know any other way. And then one day, maybe a few years after I met him, I met his wife when I was uh, sitting in the park and she was crying. And she was crying about her husband, how he was a really difficult man. So the man was sort of like um, really stubborn, really hard on people, really hard on himself, really hard on his wife, really hard on his children, and of course, really hard on me. But it did not have anything to do with me. It was something that that man was having. He was not judging only me, but he was very hard on himself, judging himself. And so there, like this, there are many people out there, people that you can do whatever or say whatever, bring up the best arguments, the best theories, the best of everything, and it won't be good enough to let them accept you. And in the end, it's you who have to accept yourself. And I think that when you take the heavy subject of trying to be accepted and trying to explain what is going on with you, when you take that out of your relationships, then they will have a much better chance at succeeding. So when you're meeting friends, are you going to go to a football place or a tennis court? Or do you invite them for 30 minutes of tea? And just some superficial chatting, because why don't we don't want you to be very negative or very focusing on your symptoms the whole time. So 30 minutes of Drinking tea together is great. It's much better than pushing you through hours and hours of activities. And then your friends also know what, what you need. Because as long as you don't know what you need, you can't tell that to others. 
it's really important to to maintain healthy relationships relationships that are not only on dealing with your with your illness but some lightness some joy some belonging is really important to keep that in your life so accept really fast that you're no longer the old person accept your condition feel the guilt of not being able to push through or being the old you be very honest make safe words plan your times um, in a thoughtful way 30 minutes of drinking tea is much better than four hours of going to a wedding for example so be very thoughtful of yourself and keeping your relationships like with friends or your partner also makes you able to get help for example you need some stuff to be carried some groceries to be delivered or uh, maybe you're going to move and etc so you can ask the help of your environment but you won't be able to pay back right at least that's what you think so you can't give them money probably you can't do the same thing back but that's all okay maybe you can't buy flowers but what you could do is to tell them how much you appreciate them maybe send a letter maybe make a note and that way the the people that are doing things for you also feel appreciated and then don't make the mistake of dumping your negativity to those people because that will seriously harm those relationships i think in this case if you are in a very difficult and dark spot then you really need a therapist where you can dump your stuff someone that can guide you through your difficult emotions but doing that on your relationships will most likely harm them and then finally you're going to deal with judgment people will judge you but none of the judgment that people will give you is new because you have been judging yourself in the exact same way so maybe all there is is that you are afraid that others will judge you just like you are judging yourself so feel the fear feel the guilt and just accept that others will judge you and others will be mean just like you are mean to yourself And if you navigate it, navigate your relationships very careful and really appreciate them and use them for lightness as well. So I think that when you take these tips into account, your relationships, your environment, your partner, your children, your parents-in-law will react much better on your new circumstance. And that makes your relationship uh, easier to maintain. So you will become a new you. You will learn much better how to deal with your emotions and your boundaries. And not everyone is able to, go, to keep up with that. So a lot of the people that you have in your life right now will just fade away. And that's going to be a good thing because it's going to make space for new people. And if you desperately want your partner or husband to keep up with you then involve them especially when you're in the release process where you learn how to turn your symptoms on and off and how to deal with emotions etc then do this together although i mean many people don't like to do this and the only reason that you are doing this is because you have a chronic disease so if they don't have a chronic disease there is not not much reason for them to, to change and to become healthier what I usually see is that when the partner is not doing the inner work, just like you are going to do, the relationships becomes very difficult because it's, it will be dealing with someone who is very emotionally immature while you are becoming very emotionally mature. So it's going to be worth it. And in the meantime, when your partner is very supportive, 
then take that as a gift. Appreciate that. Maybe his or her time to deal with these kind of things will come later. Accept this. Accept that. Maybe you will break up. Maybe you lose your job. But maybe you find a new partner. Or maybe things will become all right again. It's all uncertain. So there's a lot of fear involved. And you can feel the fear. And then many people are not really understanding your symptoms. Because they've never had them. But a lot of people understand things like migraine attacks or headaches. These are also mind-body symptoms, just like severe fatigue and a crash. It's just that your symptoms are amplified right now. And what I've, well, very, very often when I've been dealing with, uh, with, uh, with both the partner and, and the client, is that when the partner wants to understand the symptoms, I'm going to dive deep into their psyche and I'm going to find their stressors because everybody is always avoiding something. So they talk around it, you know, and they, they mention everything except that. Yet at an unconscious level, almost everybody is busy with trying to avoid something. And when I find that something, then even the partners can experience chronic symptoms. Maybe not chronic, but they can experience a crash or a migraine attack or severe fatigue or back pain. So if, if, if that's what you want, it, it's totally possible. But uh, I mean, if, that's a threat, if, if that is threatening your survival because you're dependent on their help, then uh, I, I wouldn't do that. But yeah, so um, I mean, life has given you this situation to heal because that's basically how I see it. And the less of a fuss you make it and the less resistance you have against it, the less you're trying to fight it, the smoother it will become. Because everything you, that you resist persists and everything that you resist gives you stress. And stress hormones are not making anything easier. That's the reason why most people have a dysregulated nervous system, according to other programs, etc. Because it's this chronic state of resistance. Resisting an emotion, resisting that your child might, might have uh, bad, bad grades. Resisting someone's projection on you. Resisting the symptoms. And therefore, uh, acceptance and allowing is, is probably probably the first step. So thank you uh, for listening. If you have enjoyed this podcast, then uh, consider rating it on Spotify or subscribe to this uh, channel on, on YouTube and Spotify. Visit our website to learn more about the release process where we do something completely different. Because almost everybody that that that, that I coach or that is a client of mine has done some sort of a rainbow training program, but you know they get this initial improvement. They're really sharp on telling this nervous system story. And in the beginning of these types of protocols, almost everyone experiences um, an improvement, but the vast majority is not able to, to keep that, to stay with that. And most people end up worse than what they were before some sort of a protocol like that. So we're doing something completely different and you can check it out as well on the website releasecfs.com. Thank you for listening and I wish you a beautiful day. Bye.